Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. So today I'm going to be separating out my strawberries. So when you have strawberries, you're going to find that in the fall or late summer, they're going to start sending out runners. Runners happen after fruiting and they will actually be a second plant. Now a lot of people say, oh my goodness, these things are getting so invasive, I'm just gonna cut them, throw them away. And I'm thinking to myself, what? You're throwing out strawberry runners. So uh, basically I'm here to set the record straight that if you are throwing out strawberry runners, um, if I ever become president, I'm making that illegal because it's so crazy. These are fully functioning plants that are going to produce excellent strawberries for you or a friend. I mean, good heavens, there are so many people in, in hunger nowadays that you could cut them, give them away for free, and you could help put food on someone else's plate. So don't throw them away. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pull out the runners. Overall, uh, I, I definitely neglected this bed to, to maintain the runners. So I basically, if I saw one hanging out here, you know, you got, you got a runner here, right here. Great example. So this runner here, I mean, it starts here. It's got, a plant, it's got a plant here. It's got another plant down here. Uh, you can't even see it, it's right there. <laughs> so there's another plant there. It goes to another plant there and then the mother plant. So there's actually four plants attached to this one. Now it's a great way to, to uh, not only ensure that you have lots of plants, but it's also a great way to spread the love. Um, I uh, basically have a second bed here that I'm going to be planting out uh, with strawberries. After that, I'm not gonna have any more places to plant strawberries, so I'm probably going to either move a few up to the cottage or I'm gonna give them away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically wait for the plant to be, uh, begin producing roots, this, this plant. Because what you have here, you have a main plant, and the main plant's going to send out uh, what's called an umbilical cord. And uh, just like a mother has an umbilical cord on her baby before it's cut, these have an umbilical cord as well attached to the mother plant and every plant has the potential to be a mother. So there's no end to the amount of plants you can get. It's exponential. So there will come a time where you're going to have to start giving some away unless you have a couple acres on a farm. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to wait for the plant to begin producing nodules. Those nodules are actually roots. And sometimes you can actually set them in the soil. Here I didn't really have a whole lot of space. So I just began, um, I just began kind of nestling the plants around here, making sure they weren't coming into the walkways because then they'd get stepped on and trampled and then it just looks bad. So I just kept kind of mounding them and throwing them up in, in kind of a pile here and they would eventually work their way down. Some would touch the soil and set down roots. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pull up each individual plant and I'm going to cut the umbilical cord on all of them and we're going to see how many plants we can get. Then we're going to actually plant out this bed here with all new plants. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be uh, an excellent addition to the perennial garden. Um, these right here are called Jewel. They are an awesome ever-bearing uh, variety of strawberry and they will produce huge strawberries. So, you know, the more the better. And so I'm gonna to get to this, I'm gonna pull these up. And then what we're going to do is ones that have the nodules, like I was speaking about, are ready to root. So I'm just going to take them I'm gonna cut the umbilical cord from the mother plant because that will allow the mother plant to put more energy into putting out bigger fruit. So you do wanna cut, uh, cut the runners because if you leave them over time, you'll find that it's kind of a chain reaction. Um, the mother plant will be feeding another plant, that'll be feeding another plant, that'll be feeding another plant, and you really won't have the fruit production that you would hope. You'd have a lot of plants, but not a whole lot of fruit production. So this is a way that you can ensure lots of plants and lots of fruit. I mean, in what way is that not a win-win situation? So we're gonna get to that and we're gonna get started. And I'll catch y'all in a little bit. All right, so we basically ended up with this massive pile of uh, strawberry runners. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically take the strawberry runner and I'm going to just take my hand, wiggle a little hole and pop her down there. It's really no science. Um, I'm going to try not to bury past the crown, um, the crown being the part where the roots would normally come out. And I'm just going to, uh, just going to bury them pretty much right at soil level uh, so that they don't have crown rot. 
and you can see the video on how to properly plant strawberries um, for, for a more in-depth tutorial on that. So there we go. We're all finished and the bed is completely planted out. These will begin to take root within a couple days. They'll begin growing, putting on new growth and getting ready for winter dormancy. It's perfectly fine to plant them in the fall. Everyone always says, uh, don't plant strawberries in the fall. They won't have a time to get their root system established. They'll be plenty fine. And also what you can do is you can mulch them with some mulched up leaves or grass clippings. Added a little added insulation. You can also put them underneath a hoop house for a little while. Uh, I leave them just like this and they honestly came out just fine. So no need to worry about it. They're going to do great. So like I said, I had a lot of plants that I couldn't plant because the bed is full and basically I'm left with a bunch of extra plants. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take these plants. I'm going to set them right on the surface here allow them to set down roots and then what I'm going to do is once they've set down roots I'm going to have a giveaway and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to send some to you and a couple of the viewers as well I'm going to have a giveaway in a couple weeks once these have a nice root system that way I can pick the ones that will survive for you and then uh, when I come back in two weeks what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video having a drawing I'm going to then pull them up bare root and I'm going to pack them in uh, just some wet paper towel, put them in a flat rate box for you or a flat rate envelope and I'll send them off to you. And then all you have to do is plant them and then they should be ready for winter. Now, if you do have uh, winter in your area already, all you have to do is plant them in a windowsill, get them growing and uh, then all you have to do is move them to a place where it gets a little cooler and they'll begin to go dormant for you. So it's really not difficult to get these things started. Even in the winter time, you can plant these uh, get them growing and uh, and they'll go dormant for you and then they'll sprout in the springtime when the weather conditions are proper. And as always, this is Luke from My Gardener, hoping you learned something new, hoping you enjoyed, and also I hope you're growing big or going home and I'll catch you all later. All right, see ya. Bye.